we're ready for our last step inside of our input component. All we have to do is add in some styling to style the view, the text, which is going to be our label, and the text input itself. So just a little bit more. To add in our styling, we'll do the same thing as previous. We'll add in a styles object at the bottom of the file. So we'll say const styles is an empty object. And I think that we're going to end up with three styles inside of here. We'll end up with one for our label, one for the text input, and one for the overall container, so the overall view tag right here. So I'm going to immediately place the names of these three styles that I expect to have. We'll have an input style. We will have a label style. And finally, a container style as well. All right, we got a decent amount of type ins. So let's get to it. First off, our input style will have a color of 000. We'll give it a padding right of five. So this is gonna make sure that it stands off from the left-hand edge over here. We don't want it to butt up too closely, so we just wanna make sure that it has a little bit of a standoff. We'll also do a padding left of five, and then a font size of 18. This additional font size, or this larger font size right here, is gonna make sure that the users can very clearly see the text that they're entering into this field. Next, we'll add in a line height of 23. The purpose of line height is not necessarily tied to the font size. It's about how much space is in between each line of text. So by increasing the line height here, it's going to make the text inside that input just kind of stand out a little bit more. Finally, and we're gonna talk about exactly the purpose of this one right here, I'm gonna add in a flex of two. And we're gonna come back to that in just a second, so bear with me. Next, our label style. Only a couple here. We will dial up the font size as well to 18. I'm gonna add in a bunch of padding left to make sure that the label stands apart from the left-hand border over here. And then I'm gonna give this a flex one. So let's take a second and discuss these flex values. I want you to take notice that both the input and the text are children of the view tag right here. Okay, so they're both children. They're siblings of each other, might be a better way of putting it. Whenever we have siblings with a flex property designated on the style objects, the flex property is how we allocate or proportion available space to each one. So the rule that we use is we say for each sibling, in this case, input style and label style, we add up the values of flex, so two plus one, that totals three. Now, we take two divided by the total of three. That means that two thirds of the available space will be allocated to the input style, and one divided by three, or one third, will be added, allocated to the label style. As soon as we render this inside the simulator, you know, as soon as we test it out, I think it's gonna start to make a lot of sense. So let's finish up the styling here and then see what it looks like. So the last rule we have to do is our container style. And this container style is gonna be applied to the overall view tag. So for our container style, we'll add a height of 40, a flex of one to make sure that it fills up all the available space that there is. And then we wanna make sure that the label and the text input themselves show up alongside each other. So kind of in the horizontal or row direction. So to make these two items line up in the row direction, we'll give the container style a flex direction of row. Finally, we will align items center to make sure that the items are lined up vertically. All right, so now the last thing you have to do is take these three style properties and apply them to the different tags in here. So again, we're gonna use a little bit of destructuring to make that happen. So we'll pull our input style, our label style, and our container style. And we're gonna pull all those from our styles object. And then we'll apply them to each individual tag. So the overall view gets a style of container style. The text gets a style of label style. And finally, the text input gets a style of input style. All right, one last thing before we test out in the browser, we still do not have a label here. So let's flip back to our login form where this input component is being used and make sure that we pass the input a label to use in here. 
So I'm gonna go back to my login form. I'm gonna find my input. I'm gonna make sure that I pass it a label as well. So I'll give it a label of, let's say email. All right, so now this is it, time for the moment of truth. We will refresh the simulator. And okay, well, you know what, we're close, but it looks like I probably made a typo in here. I've got a warning down at the bottom. Let's double check our property name. It's giving me an error on align specifically, or a warning, I should say. And so uh, I made a mistake here. This should be align items. I'm almost positive I said align items, so I apologize for the confusion there. So let's do another refresh. All right, now this is looking pretty good. So now I should be able to click in here somewhere. Huh. Well, it looks like perhaps there's still a little bit of a mistake in here. So let's continue in the next section and figure out exactly why we can't click on the text input here.